Hey, happy Tuesday. I'm putting my earrings and my necklace back on. No, I didn't just get in a fight in the parking lot. I, I went into Target to make a video of the back to school stuff. And I can't wear earrings or a necklace because the, um, the microphone doodah hits the necklace and rattles on the earrings and you don't hear it while you're making the video but after you get done you hear all the the racket it can make so anyway they uh had some cool stuff in there they uh, have a better selection of backpacks and stuff in my opinion well they have some better quality backpacks for my kids I, I would rather just you know well they're older now they don't care about little kid backpacks but I'd rather get them one that's gonna last, you know. So, um, but they have they have some pretty decent backpacks in there and other stuff. Anyway, I made a video in there. I gotta go home and edit it now. It's I just came here after work and um, and did it. So I've gotta go home. I'm making spaghetti tonight. I gotta get home and make spaghetti. Lord, I remember this area. This is where I brought my younger son to practice driving. I was trying to teach him how to drive a stick. We didn't do too well with it. He just didn't want to learn. He just didn't have any patience with it. Like, you know, you just have to practice. You have to do it. And I know it's frustrating when you're trying to learn to drive a stick, but up here there are a lot of big empty parking lots, and I said we can practice here, and you can learn to drive a stick. Well, he didn't like it. So... He never got terribly good at it, but he decided he'd rather have a, a car anyway than, than my truck. So I sold my truck and bought the car that he is now making payments on. He makes payments on this car that I bought. So, yeah, he's got a ways to go, but he makes his payments. So we're good. I'm not just giving it to him. I know it's. I know a lot of parents give their kids a car. I just, and every parent has to make that decision for themselves. And I, I don't care. You do whatever you want to. Um, but I will. I've already. I told. I told my kids from the time they were small. I will not be giving you a car if you want a car. Um, you're gonna be paying me back for this car. If they have a little bit of skin in the game, they have something invested. Honestly, I think they treat it better. I think they drive more carefully when they have an investment in it, you know. It, that's just my opinion. You do whatever you want to. You don't have to justify anything to me. You don't, whatever you want to do. I had to buy my own car, and my mom worked out a deal with me. She said, all right, you have to get a job and s save up $500 to, s to show me you're serious about it. And I was only making three twenty an hour, so saving up $500 took a while. <laughs> Fortunately, I had some money saved up already for my allowance, so I didn't have to earn the whole $500 on my job. I already had like $200 saved up for my allowance. And show me you're serious, and then, you know, we'll see about getting you a car, and I'll pay for it, and then you have to make payments. We'll determine how much you have to pay every month, and you have to keep your grades up, you have to keep your job, you know, you have to do... To, you have you have to hold up your end of the bargain and I still reserve the right to ground you if you do anything awful you know I can still ground you just so you know you know you're not above the law just because you're driving anyway all these conditions and she paid for the insurance on for me to drive and then I made payments to her for the car anyway that you know and that's the way we did it and I, I paid off the car Actually, I still owed her like $700 on this car when uh, it stopped running altogether. But she was able to sell it. The body was in good shape. She was able to sell it for enough to make up that $700. So it worked out so it was paid for. But I had no car. <laughs> my freshman year of college, I had no car. And I was, it, it sucked. I hated having no car. But my car died. And so I just, I lived on campus. So it wasn't a huge deal. But trying to get home was a pain. Anyway, that's what I told my kids I would do for them. Like, you, you have to get a job, save up some money to show me you're serious about it. I don't want to go out there and buy a car and then you quit your job. I don't really care about driving. Well, what am I going to do with this car? You know, anyway. So, that's what, that's what I did with my son, my older son. And so, he's making his payments on the car. It's all good. You know, it's all right. But, no, I will not be giving them a car. I, no. 
I think they need to have something invested in it. That again, that is just my opinion. Now, people get very defensive when it comes to any kind of decisions made as a parent. People get really testy and touchy about it. I'm not trying to say anything about anybody. That is just what I decided. You do whatever works for you. I know my parents didn't make my brother get a job. They had a car, an extra car when he was 16 and they let him drive it. And he never had to get a job, but I did. Even though they also had an extra car when I was 16, but I was not allowed to drive it. A Little bit of hypocrisy there, but whatever. Yeah, he didn't have to get a job to get a car, but I did. I never did quite understand that because both times they had an extra car that neither one of them was driving. Nobody was using it. It was just sitting there. And it wasn't because it was like a nice car either. It wasn't. But, I don't know. They made me get a job to buy my own car. I don't care though because things at home were dysfunctional and I wanted any excuse to get out of the house anyway. So, I didn't mind having a job. It was fine by me. So, I'm going to go home and make spaghetti. I have this huge... I bit the inside of my cheek yesterday. I was eating an apple and somehow... I don't... I don't turn. Where in the hell am I going? Where in the hell? Actually, I do turn there. Shit, I hear a train. I'm going to get run over. No, I do turn back there. I was thinking it was down here. It's back there. Um, I was eating an apple yesterday, and I don't know what... Something went horribly wrong. I was trying... You would think by now I know how to chew food without destroying the inside of my mouth. No, I don't know how to eat yet. You can't do a U-turn here what the sign says. Why not? Don't tell anybody. Right near the police station too. I'm leaving dangerously. Alright. Blech! Anyway. Don't tell anybody I did that. I pulled some CDs out of my cot center little thingy here. I got too many CDs in there. I listen to CDs all the time in my car. What I have? John Denver and the Muppets. A Christmas Together. Bare Naked Ladies Live. These are the ones I'm pulling out. Nirvana. Never mind. Oh, there's more in there. I just had to make room. There wasn't enough room to have all those in there. But I was eating an apple yesterday. And somehow I managed to bite like the whole inside of my cheek. I don't know what I did, but it's like, it feels like it's this big. Okay, now. I know you're young and you think you're immortal, but come on now. God. All right. It, you, you ever bite the inside of your mouth and it just feels like it's as big as a football? Oh, God, it hurts so bad. Brushing my teeth is painful just to try to brush over here. It hurts so much. All that fuss just to get to a red light. Aren't you proud? Zoom away. God. Anyway, full of piss and vinegar. I used to be like that. I can't say shit. I used to have this little Pontiac Fiero. My first car was a Fiero. Don't buy a car because you think it looks cool. But when I could get it started, it would really go for a four-cylinder. It was pretty peppy. Yeah, oh, it was a horrible car. It was a horrible car. I had constant problems with it. Don't buy a car because you think it looks cool. See, it was down to either that Fiero or there was a Mazda 323 that I was looking at. I didn't get the Mazda because it was a stick shift and I was still not super comfortable driving a stick. The Fiero was an automatic. My brother had taught me to drive a stick with his Nissan Pulsar, but I still wasn't super duper good at it. But let me tell you, that Fiero died the night I graduated high school. Although I did make a deal, I made a deal with that Fiero. I said, look, if you'll just get me through high school, I won't ask anything else of you. Graduation night, I left graduation and I went and I pulled into this McDonald's parking lot because I was meeting some people and my car never started again. I had to have it towed home from the McDonald's parking lot. It, it never started again. It just died. I mean, completely deceased in the parking lot. 
but he got me through high school. I couldn't say anything like, well, you held up your end of the bargain. I can't get mad at you. But I didn't have a car all summer and I had to borrow my mom's and you know, like it sucked and blah. But I had no transportation. Um, anyway, what was I saying? Shit, I don't know. There's a deer. There's a damn deer standing there. Sorry. I know I'm, I'm all over the place. Part of the reason why I get distracted is because I see stuff while I'm talking to you and you can't see what I'm talking about, but it distracts me. What was I saying? So occasionally I would see that Mazda 323 around town and it, I kept seeing it. It was in my hometown, you know, and somebody in my hometown bought it and I would see them driving around like there goes that Mazda and it was very distinct because it was this particular shade of like this metallic seafoam green color. It's not as ugly as it sounds. It was actually not bad and it had a luggage rack on the back and a sunroof and it was, you know, it was very distinct. And it was the only one like it around there. And I would see it every now and then. And I would go, man, if I had bought that car, I would still have it. And when I graduated college four years later, that damn Mazda was still tooling around my hometown. I still saw it all the time. Like, damn it. If I had bought that car, I wouldn't have had to buy another car the summer of 1992. See, what I did was I finished my first year of college. I went back home and I got a job in a factory and um, saved up some money. And uh, let's see, how did that work? I'm trying to remember how I, how did I get to work at first? Cause I didn't have a car. I don't remember now, but anyway, I, I, my mom had to co-sign cause I was still only 18 years old. And she had to co-sign for me and I bought my first uh, Nissan Sentra, summer of 1992. And she uh, co-signed for me to buy that car. I still remember my payments were $198 a month for five years that's how much they were I got a hell of a deal on that car I drove that car for 14 years and put over 320,000 miles on it it was a hell of a car but I kept seeing that damn Mazda like if I had just and the Mazda and the Fiero were the same price like why didn't I buy the Mazda my goodness it's probably still running around out there somewhere with like 2 million miles on it or some shit I don't know <sighs> I don't feel like making spaghetti, but the other night I made um, a pizza out of some leftover taco meat and some leftover cheese I had. So I made a pizza, but I realized I didn't have any pizza sauce. So I opened a jar of spaghetti sauce and used that for pizza sauce. But now I have a bunch of spaghetti sauce left over in the jar and I want to use that up. So I'm going to make some spaghetti with it so I don't waste it because that's just the easiest way to use it up that I can think of right now. So. I guess I'm making spaghetti tonight. I don't know. It might, might actually be pretty good. Sometimes I'm not in the mood for something until I start making it and it starts to smell good. Like, yeah, I can get down with that. So, not much exciting has happened. Has anything exciting happened? Uh, no. Well, my dad got a dog. I just, I, I talked to my dad on the phone on my way to Target after work. I, I called my dad and and he told me that he had been checking the local shelter, the animal shelter. He had been going by there, you know, and he was looking for like a small, a smaller dog. He didn't want a big dog. And they got this one dog in, this poor thing. It had lived, I don't know where it lived, but it was horribly neglected. It was a young little six month old little puppy dog. And, and she was, she's kind of small and said that she had been sorely neglected and she he said she is just starved for attention she's just you know very excited very full of energy because she's very young and she has just been neglected so bad poor little thing so he's you know he said I've spent a lot of time with her you know she's really happy to just have anybody around and, you know she's just so happy just all the time you know so he's you know He's had her for a, a couple days, and so it's, he said it's going well, so that's cool. It's just a small dog. He said she's, she's mostly white. Her ears, her ears are brown, and she has little, um, like little, little small, little spots on her. I gotta see this dog. He said it's like this little spots, you know. So she sounds really cute, but he said she's, you know, 
really happy so far. And he took her down to the creek. You know, he's got that big creek in front of his house. He said, oh, she loved it. She jumped right in and she splashed around and played and she wanted to drink out of every puddle. And she, he said she loves the water, just loves the water. So yeah, he said she loves to go down to the creek. So yeah, it sounds like they're having a good time. So that was kind of cool. I was glad to hear that. He's been looking for a dog for a while and his dog never came back. He had this dog named Nubbin, had like half a tail. And that just, his other dog brought to the house. I don't know if I told you that story where he had this one dog that would that liked to go to the neighbor's house. And one day he left and brought another dog back with him and then left. Like, and the dog, like he brought a replacement dog that we never found out where this dog came from. We still don't know. But anyway, my dad went out to run errands one day and Nubbin was in the back of my dad's truck and apparently he jumped out of the back of the truck somewhere where he stopped and they never found him. They don't know because he said, I made several stops and he must have gotten out somewhere where I stopped. I went everywhere looking for that dog. He put up signs everywhere. He talked to everybody he could find and like nobody saw the dog and poor dog. He never, he looked for months for that dog and the dog was just gone. So I hope he's all right wherever he is. But anyway, he has this other dog. I don't think he has a name for it yet. It will probably be something kind of weird. He, he names, he gives his dog like people names, well, except for Nubbin. He had this dog. My favorite dog of his was Fred. And then there was some, um, Fred was this big yellow dog. He had a lot, I think he was mostly Boxer, I believe. He looked like he, he had maybe yellow lab and Boxer or something. Greatest dog. Oh my God, he was awesome. And then there was, um, what was that weird little dog he had? He had this little dog. It was part Chihuahua and part God knows what. I can't remember what was that dog's name. Gus. He named him Gus. And it was funny. Nobody taught him to do this, but if you if you if he came up to you and said, "Hey Gus," he'd spin in a circle every time you said, "Hey Gus," he would spin in a circle. Like, why does he do that? I don't know. But Gus, like, Gus was small, and he liked to jump up on Fred's back and ride around like Fred was a horse or something. He'd just stand on Fred's back and just go around. <laughs> he would stand on his back. He had remarkable balance. But Gus, Gus, I think, got hit by a car. I can't remember what happened to him. And uh, Fred was bitten by a rabid raccoon, and they had to put him down, unfortunately. Um... It's rough living up there on the mountain, I tell you. It's 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 tough up there. And he has this dog. I don't know what he's gonna name her. Anyway, he said she's she's a, a good little dog and very very happy to have people around. So yeah. Anyway, Whew, I'm gonna go home and make spaghetti, and that's about all I know. I, I haven't been here much. I've been around. What is going on? Oh, they're doing estate sales out of that place now. That's different. But it's a nice evening. It's not too hot. Not too humid. Not too bad. It feels pretty good outside. Um, we have that smoke down here again. It's very smoky. You can really... It had me irritated yesterday. My throat was all scratchy and messed up. And I kept getting a tickle in my throat. It kept making me cough. It's not as bad today, but it was really bad yesterday. I think it's from those Canadian fires still. I don't know, but it was horrible yesterday. But um, I hope your summer's going well. My younger son is sad because his summer vacation is already half over and he's just bummed. <laughs> Sorry, man, I know it sucks. Um, it'll be okay, he starts, um, high school in the fall. He's, I think he's a little nervous about it. I said, you'll, you'll do fine. I think you'll definitely like it better than middle school. I mean, that's, that seems to be the experience of a lot of people. I don't know anybody who enjoyed middle school. I hated middle school. Oh God, I couldn't wait to get out of there. It was awful. I enjoyed high school myself. I, I really did. Now I went to a, a much smaller high school than the one that he'll be going to weight about 25 percent of the size the high school i went to only had like 700 kids in it his is way bigger than that so it's a different experience 
I like the smaller school myself. 700 kids in a school, I think it's about right. You get to know everybody in your class reasonably well. Um, I don't know, it's just more, more of an intimate atmosphere, I guess, a little more personal. So that's just how I feel. I guess some people like a larger school or a smaller school. I don't know. But thank you so much for being here and for watching. Um, what have I got coming up? Well, tonight it'll be the Target back to school video. I gotta go home and edit it. I may edit it before I um, start on the spaghetti. I don't know, it's already like seven o'clock, shit. Maybe I'll start the spaghetti and work on editing it while the spaghetti cooks. I don't know. I have to make the spaghetti and I put hamburger meat in there and everything. Maybe I'll work on both at the same time. I'll try that out. But I don't I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow. I have no idea. But thank you so much for being here. I hope your week is going awesome. And I will see you again soon.